morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at Port Elgin United Church. I'm Reverend Heather McCarroll, and with us for worship today, we have Jenny Robinson, who's going to be leading us through our hymns. We have Laura and John Van Burlow up in the AV booth, and helping with the scripture reading and some of the liturgy today is Patty Byers. And so we've all come here today to join with you in our time of worship, and this is the first Sunday of Lent, which is reason to celebrate right there because you know when Lent starts, Easter is not far away and it always is in the spring, so we're getting there. So we have gathered on land that has been occupied for centuries. Long before it was claimed to be a united church, this land was the traditional territory of the Saugeen Ojibwa Nation, the collective of the Chippewas of Saugeen First Nation, and the Chippewas of Newash Unceded First Nation. We thank those who cared for this land before us and we pledge to work as partners as we move into the future. And as we move through our service today, I would also like to remind you that we're going to do communion a little bit later. So you might want to make sure you have a little glass of juice and a piece of bread with you. Over our Lenten season, we're going to do a Lenten candle liturgy. And you'll notice the candles are here at the front. And we have a we have someone to thank for these. Judy Kilburn and her friend Rose Mooney. Rose donated the wood and, and Judy created the cross that the candles are in. And she actually hand carved each one of these nails out of wood and then made them look like they're metal. She did every, every little bit. And so we thank you, Judy and Rose, for this. I'm just going to move to this side because Patty is going to help me with this. Today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. This season offers us the opportunity to be more reflective as we journey together with Jesus through the wilderness and beyond. And as followers of Jesus, we have all experienced times of testing and temptation. Times we have felt that we were traveling in the wilderness. As people of faith, we confess that in the face of difficult decisions, we are sometimes drawn to easy answers and actions that do not demand much of us. So as we extinguish this candle, we recall the ways in which we struggle to embody our faith in the actions of our lives. As we watch the smoke rise, we remember that God's spirit is with us in mysterious and tangible ways. We are reminded that God comforts, encourages, and supports us as we face the challenges of following the way of Jesus. And so knowing ourselves to be loved and blessed, we raise our voices to song in prayer to you, O God. Today's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In this reading, we witness the baptism and testing of Jesus. Jesus came from Nazareth into Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. 
May we be blessed by today's reading of God's holy word. is all about. I kind of chuckled last week. I really enjoyed Sandy's sermon last week. I really enjoyed it. And yet I chuckled a bit because she said, nobody likes Lent. I happen to love Lent. But you know, I was raised a Lutheran, so maybe it's more the Lutheran in me. But I, I happen to really enjoy Lent. So here's a little bit of insight on Lent. Did you know that Lent means lengthening and stands for the time in spring when the days grow stronger and longer? I always have thought of Lent as being kind of countercultural to the world because as the days are getting longer, which I know we've been celebrating at our house over supper, we're doing the dishes, it's now daylight. Soon I'll be able to walk Abby for her evening walk in daylight. And that's, that's going to be amazing. But as we do that here at the church, we keep extinguishing more light each week as we go through Lent because it's kind of countercultural. And that is a good thing because it reminds us of who we belong to. We can celebrate the light that's around us, but also walk together with Jesus. Now, I didn't know this. Did you know that the original period of Lent was only 40 hours? It was spent fasting to commemorate the suffering of Christ and the 40 hours that he spent in the tomb. Now, that was news to me. In the early 3rd century, Lent was then lengthened to 6 days, and about 800 AD it was changed to 40 days. And Sundays do not count in those 40 days. Sundays are always a day of celebration and praise. So it doesn't take too much reading of the Bible to acknowledge and understand why the number 40 is incredibly important, not only to our Christian faith, but to other faiths. Moses spent 40 days in Mount Sinai when he got the Ten Commandments. The Great Flood lasted 40 days. Moses and the Hebrew people wandered for 40 years in the desert. And so the 40 days of Lent represent our faith in many ways, but it represents the time that Jesus spent in the desert or in the wilderness from the beginning of it, just before in his beginning of his public ministry. And during those 40 days, he faced temptation and doubt and was purified himself for his upcoming ministry. As Patty read for us this morning, he was tended to by the angels during those 40 days. And those 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert in today's scripture reading can be summed up pretty well in a nutshell. The temptations were all about one way or another for Jesus to live in a worldly way instead of a godly way. And that's not so different for us today either. It's very similar to our own struggles that we have if we're honest with ourselves. I mean, nothing could be easier than to live our lives totally immersed in our everyday activities and only occasional thought of what it all really means. What do the moments of our lives really add up to? Well, we don't have to think deep about that if we just keep ourselves really busy. It's one of the temptations we all have. The spiritual aspect of our lives does not often force itself upon us. So Lent is a time in the church calendar when we're asked to once again make space in our lives for what should be the heart of our lives. And above all, Lent is a time of renewal. We call it the springtime of the liturgical year, and we ask God to help us with the important task of inner renewal. See, Jesus said to us to repent and believe the good news 
Lent is about helping us to do exactly that and to live our lives within that good news. Lent is the promise of a new start for all of us. It's not a time of discouragement and sorrow and drudgery. If it is, you're not doing it right. Rather, it's a time when we rejoice that God is the God of refreshment and of new life and of new beginnings. And look all around you. While Lent is going on, that's what's happening. There's new life springing up all around. We paused in the parking lot this morning, Jenny and Doug and I, just to listen to the birds that were singing out back of the church and waiting, anticipating that we can maybe soon hear robins. All that newness is what Lent is about. Now I got off my notes here. And there are promises, not of empty ones, but full ones, full of the power that comes from Christ who comes back to life in the resurrection. We know the ending of Lent, right? We get it. We're just doing it again to be reminded. It's all about resurrection. It reminded me this week of a story about a pit. So I want you to, I want you to play along with me for a minute here. I want you to close your eyes. And in your mind, just imagine a pit. And it can be a great big pit, it can be a little pit, but some kind of pit in your mind, one that's kind of deep. Now visualize that you have fallen into this pit. See, a man fell into a pit and he could not get out. A new age person came along and said, maybe you should network with other pit dwellers. A self-pitying person came along and said, well, you haven't seen anything until you've seen my pit. The news reporter said, could I get the exclusive story on your pit? The federal bureaucrat said, have you paid your taxes on that pit? A country inspector said, do you have a permit for that pit? The realist said, I like this one, well, that's a pit. The idealist said, the world should not have pits. The optimist said, well, things could be worse. And the pessimist said, of course, things will get worse. But Jesus, imagine right now that Jesus has reached the edge of the pit you're in, whether it is actually a physical pit or a pit of your own devising. Right now, a temptation that has led you away from God, right there at that edge of that temptation, at the edge of that disappointment, at the edge of that pit right now, is Jesus. And he's standing there and he's reaching out his hand. And he took that man and he lifted him out of the pit. Lent is a time to look up and see that Jesus is there ready to take you and reach and lift you up, maybe to heights you haven't been for a long time. Let's face it, it's been a really tough year and a bit already. See, a pit is an awful place to be, particularly a pit that's been created by the power of sin and temptation. But we're not alone. There is one who seeks to help us out of the pit, and his name is Jesus. And through God, he is able to help. He is able to save. He is able to redeem. And not only is he able, but he is very much willing. And not only is he willing, he is already active. Active to save us and to bring us to the world a new day. Active to bring us each to a new life. And we find this Jesus when we have the strength to leave behind all that the world tempts us with and instead turn and start to live a more spiritual life. So during Lent, we can have confidence that Christ is bringing with him and bringing us into a new and wonderful life. So let us walk the wilderness way until finally we find that promised land for each and one of us. Until finally we see not only ourselves, but we see with confidence and we know that God is with us. This is a time to look beneath all the layers and to see that there is an image of God within us. And what does God want of you? Is God calling you to serve in a new way? Is God calling you to serve in love? Is God calling you to leave behind certain bad habits and to embrace a new beginning? Bad habits are only hurting you. Has God a special role for you? May this Lenten journey be a time of discovery and renewal for you and for all of us. So let us pray. Well, dear Holy God, as we begin our Lenten journey, the cross of Jesus is ever before us. But you have taken this symbol of humiliation weakness and death and have turned it into a symbol of hope, strength, 
and resurrection is testimony to your desire to redeem all creation and your power to work all things for good and holy purposes. So we praise you for the hope we have in Christ Jesus. We affirm that your resurrection power is still at work in our lives and our world. And we recommit ourselves to trust you and to follow in the way of the cross. We ask that you sustain and uphold all the frontline workers who have endlessly been working on our behalf. Please bring healing to Laura and all those who are ill and recuperating. And may those who grieve feel your comfort and presence. And now together we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Why should I feel so discouraged? Should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my call. today. We have two folks that have come, and uh, it's really nice to have two folks to look at while we leave worship. As you saw through the announcements today, that we are starting to do our reaching out again here at Pernogan United Church, and it is amazing. There are some things on the horizon as well that are coming along the pike. We're looking at how to help out the women's house, how to help out those in the community that have found the pandemic especially difficult. We're also continuing our support of mission and service. So your support of the continued ministry here at Port Elgin United Church makes all the difference for this, this ministry and this community. So we thank you. But we also stand up in this moment and we offer not only our resources, but also our very selves. So on this first Sunday of Lent, let us stand and offer to the Lord both our lives and our resources.
pray. Well, dear source of life, may the works of our hands bring you honor. May the life we live reflect the risen word of life. And may the service we offer be inspired by the breath of life. And may our resources be multiplied so they may reach your love out to more. Amen. Now today we are going to take time during this first Sunday of Lent to do a prayer of communion. It's not something we've done very often since we've been not able to meet in person. And so may the Lord be with you as we lift up our hearts and we give thanks. Let us go into our prayer. Holy God, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. We praise you. Joining our voices with choirs of angels and with prophets, apostles, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever say glory to your name by saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So you are holy, O God of majesty. And blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, baptized by John in the Jordan, anointed by your Holy Spirit, and tested in the wilderness. Jesus came to proclaim the good news that all the time was fulfilled and that your kingdom had come near. So remembering your gracious act in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this juice to celebrate his Lenten journey and his resurrection. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. And knowing how great is the mystery of faith, we say, we say Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and juice, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be communion to the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with your church in the world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And so, just as Jesus took the bread on his last meal with, his, with the disciples before Good Friday, he broke it, and after giving thanks, he said, Take and eat. For this is my body given to you in remembrance of me. And so we take up the bread. And likewise, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So do this in remembrance of me. And together now we take up the cup. share in a prayer following communion. So God of freedom, grant that this meal we have shared today will remind us that in you and in your love, we are set free. Amen. So we hope that this meal that is open and welcoming to everyone will be a great start for your Lenten journey. And we're now going to end our service with the hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, verses 1 and 2.
faith and continue on your journey, Jesus goes with you. Let him be your guide with every step. Amen. from a